Some customers are still on the fence about making the move to SAS via. Now this is understandable because when you're getting ready for migration, it can feel a little bit overwhelming. During this session, Gary and I are gonna share some best practices that um, we're gonna help you take maybe some of the guesswork out of getting started. We're also going to share uh, some data-driven strategies and techniques to help you get started, just in case you're on the fence. I'm Christiana Lykin. I have been at SAS for over 20 years. I, um, I work in product management. My focus is migration and helping customers move to the next version of SAS VIA. I'm Gary Mailer. I'm going to be talking with Christiana and you today about migration. I've been at SAS a little over 30 years in administration, and the recent focus has been on migration and helping customers moving to the latest, greatest versions of SAS. All right, Gary and I have an awesome presentation for you today. It's divided into three parts. I'm gonna kick it off with an overview and I'm gonna to talk to you about all of my favorite migration applications. Then I'm gonna turn it over to Gary and he is gonna talk about the migration process and he's gonna show you some really relevant examples of what that looks like. And then he's gonna wrap it up with what's next and tell you and share with you all the things that we're working on now. All right, let's get started with that overview. All right, the, um, we are investing in migration planning and migration execution applications. This presentation is focused on SAS 9.4 to VIA 4 migration. And so um, you'll be using the applications that are highlighted in blue on this slide. We recommend all of our SAS 9.4 customers use SAS 9 content assessment. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that with you now. All right, SAS 9 Content Assessment is a family of applications and it's designed to help you understand what's on your SAS 9 system. When we worked with customers, we got some typical questions um, when, during the migration planning process. And so we've mapped the applications to each of these questions. The, you'll see the applications on the bottom in blue. The first question is, what do I have and how am I using it? The first way you can start to answer this question is to run an inventory. And it, it's exactly what it sounds like. We look at, we count and we find and count all of the things that you have in SAS 9. When you're ready to understand what features you're using for your, some of your favorite products, you're gonna run profile. To understand runtimes, you'll use summarize SAS log steps. And then we had a question about code because some customers realized that inside their favorite products included some code. And so if you're using Enterprise Guide or DI Studio or um, store processes, you'll use Gather SAS code to collect some of that code. And the reason you're collecting it is so that when you ask the next question, will my code work in SAS via code check, um, Code check will look for your .sas files as well as the code that you've uh, gathered up using gather sas code, and it will answer the question, will my code work in sas via? It also will help identify any code that needs some attention before you do a migration. So for example, if you have an external reference as part of that code and you need to update that hard-coded path, code check will identify that for you so you know that you can do that work ahead of time. We also have another amazing application that's a little new to the portfolio, which is code check for internationalization. This um, application will identify known internationalization issues and um, that's, that's associated with your code uh, when you're using your code globally. All right, now that you know what you have and you know how you're using it, you understand what code will work in SAS VIA, the next question you're gonna ask is what's my ideal migration path? And so we have some applications to help for this as well, we, and we call this guided migration. The first application is modify SAS code. Um, remember when I told you that code check actually found some of the code that might need some attention? Well, modify SAS code is gonna help automate and fix some of that code, especially those external references. Um, create SAS packages is going to help me prepare items for transport and migration. Create four packages is going to do the exact same thing for forecasting projects. Okay, so now that you know about content assessment, the next thing I want you to know is if you're doing a migration, I really would like for you to use the stable cadence um, for SAS VIA. The reason we want you to use this is because SAS VIA releases every month, and we want you to have the latest and greatest features, especially as you're doing migration. 
Um, content assessment also ships monthly. So just want to point that out because you might run content assessment more than once and we always want you to grab the latest release. All right, you might be asking, how do I get content assessment? Well, it's available on SAS downloads and hotfixes. We don't charge for it, it's free for customers. And um, all you have to do is do the download and sign a click agreement and it's yours. Um, we would love for you to share your results with us. We have a whole process for how you do that. And what we do with this information is when you share your results with us, we combine it and aggregate it with other customer data. And we look for patterns of usage of SAS 9. And the reason this is important is because we are we are very data driven when it comes to the migration work that we're doing. And so we want to make sure that we're working on things that are most important to customers. And the way that we discover that is when you share your results with us, um, we can see the things that are most important to most customers. Now, keep in mind, if our pattern or picture changes, our strategy changes too, and we try to respond to customers. So please do share. And don't worry, if you have, um, there, we don't collect any PII data or any values like financial data or usernames. We don't bring any of that in. It's all about usage data. And we even take extra steps to obfuscate anything that might be PII or, um, and we also encrypt the data. So you can feel very confident about sharing with us. All right, and, and my very last slide. I just wanna point out that, uh, you know, the whole topic around migration and modernization. Um, mo when I think about modernization, I think about it as a very thoughtful process. And we see a similar behavior in migration right now. Customers are very thoughtful about the way that they're thinking about migration and they're executing their migration strategy. Um, our development team at SAS uh, is the same way. Both the VICE teams and our migration teams, we are being very thoughtful about what we're doing, when we're doing it, the way we're doing it. And so um, just know that it's important to us to, um, to get your feedback and your experiences. And so please do share with us and please share that SAS 9 content assessment data so we can make sure that we know your priorities too. I am now gonna turn it over to Gary and he's gonna tell us all about the migration process. All right, thanks, Christiana, for that great introduction. I want to give an overview first of what we do talk about when we say about getting content into SAS via 4. But there's a lot of different areas you might have been using in SAS 9, business intelligence, code, processes, like stored processes and analytics. And if you look at the left side of the slide, those are the things you might be familiar with from the SAS 9 side. All the items on the right side are things that we migrate them into. And our goal is to automatically convert and help you migrate things from the left to the right maybe in this order, maybe in the order you choose. But as you start looking at the content you have, it's important to know that most of the things that are important to you will move from left to right. Some of the things of particular interest, going back to the things Christiana talked about, are SAS programs and enterprise guide projects, DI Studio jobs. That's where our customers have created just a wealth of content, and we're working very hard to make sure we have the best experience to get those across. If you can help us focus, as, as Christiana said, share some results with us, or we'll just go along our merry way and do the best we can with migrating everything. But we do welcome your input to help guide us with priorities. The process really talks about three steps once we're talking about migration. Content assessment, as Christiana mentioned, is the tool that you can download, applications, and a lot of things will become clear to you as we look at what's on your SAS 9 system. The next step is really migrating. Once you've looked at it, maybe plan the steps in which or the order in which you want to do the processes. The, the tools we have in content migration will help you get it from left to right, from your SAS 9 to VIA side, and just help you get there. And finally, review. Review or validate is really the last step. We have reports and other sorts of things that will help you be sure that your content has gotten there, and you can look at those things. We'll show some examples of this process going forward. Let's start with migrating SAS code. There's a lot of things to think about with SAS code. When we've spoken with customers, they, they know that the SAS code is really the bread and butter of a lot of the analytics and important things they do in their company, but they might have security issues that might be latent in their code. It's fine for running on-premises with your SAS 9 classic system on PCs, but if you're considering moving to the cloud and modernizing, some of those things may need to be looked at. There may be incompatibilities in terms of hard-coded paths or other sorts of things we want to pay attention to internationalization issues, and other external references. So we're going to walk through a couple of these things and show how we can help understand what you have. In terms of security concerns, 
Once we've run content assessment and look at this report, you can see many things on here that might be something are concerning to you. So on the left side, we have some program elements that we can look at and see what types of things show concerns. And on the right side, we have examples and actual pieces of code, lines of code that can show what is really the concern with those areas. So a couple of things that might be um, particularly notable is there's things called the X command. There's um, procs that have external references like proc Lua, proc SOAP. They're very powerful, but they call external web services. You may want to know what they're doing. And this report, once we gather your code, will help you see what they're doing and make sure you're making the right security choices going forward. Another area is just looking at the code in general. This data is from a case study that some, some of our customers' data has fed into. And when we looked at about 650,000 SaaS programs that we analyzed, the upper blue sphere shows what we saw in terms of were there concerns. Now, the good news is the vast majority had no concerns, but the bottom section shows some things where, for instance, people might have been using external commands. In SAS 9, there's a very, very powerful thing called the X command. People can change mod or change the permissions on files and move things around. Those are things to look at and make sure that you're happy with the behavior of those things. And the tools will help bring this to your attention. There's other sorts of data assignments that might depend on the SAS 9 metadata server. That's not something used at all in VIA. So those are things that would have to change to a different mode of doing that behavior. We can point those out. There's a couple of procedures we don't support anymore. Proc Laser is now something we've moved on to CAS. And some of the OLAP things will help, help point those out as well. So that's really what goes on in, in part of what we check on the top part in the blue sphere. In the lower sort of greenish blue sphere, we're also looking at hard-coded paths. There's a lot of places in live name statements, inclusions, <coughs> other sorts of things where external um, path references could be a concern. So if someone's looking for something on their C colon drive and their PC, that's not going to work so good if they have, say, migrating to Azure and they have no access to that. So we show what those things are. We'll look at a couple of examples of these going forward. So when we find some paths, we want to help you fix it. So one of the applications in content assessment is called SAS9, modify SAS code. When we find things like paths, and if you look at the blue sections on the right side in the middle of the screen, those are statements we found in some of our test examples. And those are normal statements we see. And we generate a file that you could use to map from the old, we show them in red here, to new paths in yellow. So by changing these few places in mapping files, we will go ahead and actually change those references in your source code for you. So that instead of looking to decal and workshop, you might want to look on your other sorts of places, say your workshop location um, on your persistent volumes in Kubernetes. So we patch those files and make them possible to make it easy to go to VIA. When we look at the code we've patched, we comment and document like any good programmer should. We put a comment block in and say, this is what the code did, the application that did it, when it did it, what it was, and what we changed it to. So this is a really powerful application. It seems straightforward, but we've seen customers that have tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of these path references in the SAS code they've been using for decades and decades. And as they're thinking about VIA and the cloud and modernizing, these are great things to think about cleaning up and make consistent. This tool can help you do that. We move forward into internationalization. These are some of the things that might be going on in your code. You might have embedded strings or using formats. We have another report. Uh, we, there's a couple of things highlighted on the lower left. We're looking at string function usage and formats used. If you're familiar with these things, there's easy ways to do them, and then there's the right way to do them. Um, you know, if you're using, say, the upcase function and it happens to work in your locale, maybe you're in a Latin one locale, great. But if you're going to internationalize and use your, your code more broadly on the cloud, K upcase would be a better choice. So we find the things that are maybe needing attention and give you suggestions for possible substitutions. We do the same thing for formats, embedded strings, and other sorts of things. So if you're noticing a pattern here where we've identified a problem that you might have from other customers have told us these things as well, help you see what they are and come up with ways to help you understand how to fix them. That's the pattern I hope you'll see as we go through more things here. When we talk about content, now we're switching to the other large concern that, that customers have a lot of content. We think about DI Studio jobs or enterprise guide projects, reports, other sorts of things. Um, this is where we are focused a lot of additional effort, and we're helping understand which things are most ready to migrate. 
You may have steps in which to make things available or data staging that you want to follow through on. Those are things that will help you look at in your data and make plans to go forward. So here's something I want to say here is you would like to think that we're going to make 100% everything work that you've used in SaaS for decades and decades on your desktop work in the cloud. That's not exactly how, how it's going to go in, in some cases. We're going to target the most frequently used and most important things that we see based on frequency of use, whether that's in DI Studio, in Enterprise Guide, in other sorts of applications, and make sure those have the fastest path and the safest automatic path to get to VIA. We may continue past that, but that's really where we're focused, sort of like the 80-20 rule, if you're familiar with that, to make sure we can focus our efforts on getting the best return for migration efforts for you. So I'm going to start by talking about Enterprise Guide. This is some feedback we've seen from customers that have shared feedback with us. And what you'll notice in many of these pictures, like Christiana showed and I'm also looking at, if I look at the pie chart in the lower right on all of these pictures, these are the types of details. These are the tasks that you might have used in your enterprise guide flows. What's interesting, almost to everything we see, is very many people use very few features. And I don't want to say that in a bad way, but you know there are things like transpose and other sorts of things that show like the blue, yellow, and other sorts of features that you've used in Enterprise Guide. That's where we're focusing our migration efforts. There are a lot of small things used infrequently. Those are things that we'll focus on much, much later or we may not get to. But we're trying to make sure that as we focus, we're focused on the things that you've used the most. So that's how we data drive some of the choices we're making to help with migration of content. When we look at what we started with an Enterprise Guide, that's on the left side of the screen here. That's pretty much what you have. And through an automatic process, we can help you get to the right side in SAS Studio. When I say automatic process, this is a, a thing you can do using a batch command line interface or CLI to bring things from .egp files you might have on SAS 9 into VIA or use the SAS Environment Manager UI that has a nice inter interactive experience for bringing things from SAS to VIA. And once we're done, automatically you would get to the point of hopefully, in most of your cases, seeing a picture on the right side. We have different layout. We have swim lanes instead of ordered lists because SAS Studio is prioritizing usability and consistency across flows between EG and, and DI Studio. So that's just a different approach. But most of the things that we can do come across. And with very little effort, we hope you'll be able to start running your things in SAS Studio on the via environment without too much effort. Now, when you're done, we also have post-migration status reports. That was the last of the three bullets I talked about, review. We want to make sure you have a way to review what happened after it finished. So of in the seeing here in these blue boxes on the left side, we tried to migrate four, five items. One migrated successfully and four had some issues in this case. And we'll point out where the issues occurred, make it easy to look at that data. Your mileage may vary, and I hope you have better results, but these are some of the, the test cases we've run through, and we validate and help you verify at the end that things have worked or not. If we switch gears a little bit, but not too far, the DI Studio jobs have a very similar process. Same sort of chart here. This is based on the feedback that customers have shared with us. We've seen the types of transformations used in DI Studio jobs. And again, we're focused on this lower right quadrant here. We see a lot of user written joins and extracts, and we're making sure the best experience for migration occurs with those. Now, just about everything will migrate, but we want to make sure the best, richest maintenance experience will show up for the things that customers have used the most frequently. And again, that's the model we've used across the system. Now, when we're looking at things in DI Studio, the way we would help automate that is find through all the DI Studio jobs you have, maybe flag some that are the most ready to migrate in terms of the richest user experience, um, show you what sort of transforms are being used in those, and help you get across those, those sorts of things. So there's a lot of content here. I'm not going to go through and read the slides, but if you want to look at the content assessment download, there's excellent documentation, and it can talk through how all of these pieces fit together to give you the best migration experience. Once you've decided what to migrate, you may need to understand which data is being used in your DI Studio jobs. Another helpful report looking at the metadata and things you have about your world will help you understand which are the tables you've used, which external files or .csv files are used. We want to make sure those are on your VIA side as well so that when you try and run these flows in SAS Studio, they'll run fine. 
as we finish up, we'll so show just what you see here. On the left side is what you would have seen in SAS Data Integration Studio. And again, through after the automatic migration, you can see we have a different layout, but very hopefully the very same execution path and the same way to run things in the SAS Studio environment on VIA. Similar pattern as before, we'll have a post-migration status report. This one was more successful in our test cases of the 49 jobs. We tried to migrate on the upper left blue circle, blue square. The middle shows that they're all successful and there's a lot of details in case you need to drill into that. And this is helpful if you really want to monitor what's going on or several people are helping to migrate some of their content from SAS 9 to VIA. This pulls all of that information together. Now, what about analytics? That's a very important area too. A lot going on there with the SAS forecast server team at, at SAS. They've, they've worked very hard on making sure things migrate just fine. And they have a very rich type of post-migration report that helps us see what happened in forecast projects that are pretty intricate. And these tools will help you see where, if something went wrong, what you need to pay attention to. But hopefully you can just review them to see what worked fine. For Enterprise Miner, working on that area as well. So if we see Enterprise Miner flows that have a pattern of model and scoring code in a single um, pipeline sequence, that works very, very well in SAS visual data mining and machine learning, what we call VDMML. We have an automatic process that will help turn things on the left side to the right side. And you can plug those little purple code steps in and again, have an easy path to getting to the point where you can run your models uh, and score code on VIA. In terms of what's next, so I talked about a lot about what we're focused on, but there's still more ground we hope to cover in migration. So later in 22, we were going to focus more on data migration. I talked about code migration. I've talked about objects like DI Studio jobs, um, enterprise guide projects. Didn't really mention, but we are, on, like I saw it on a very early slide, OLAP cubes, information maps, a lot of stored processes. A lot of other things come across, but we're turning our focus the latter part of this year to SAS libraries, data encoding, and other sorts of things that will help you get those pieces of content onto VIA. Another important piece, once your jobs, DI Studio and Enterprise Guide um, flows are in SAS Studio, we want to make sure they scale. So we're migrating uh, configuration of your SAS grids and other sorts of things that you've used for performance, and then schedules. That's an important area we're focusing on the latter part of this year and into next. How can we make sure that your scheduled tasks will run fine in VIA? When we've spoken with customers, that's very important. Some customers have upwards of 30,000 jobs a day, and that's a daunting task to make sure they can work fine in a new environment like the cloud. We're doing what we can to help with that. Other areas are guided migration. We want to make sure that we have a framework around some of the tools I've talked about today, automating the process further to from planning through the execution, which is the import and export of things, and then validation steps. So we have a lot to do there, but we're making good progress. So in summary, what I wanted to just say is, please remember that content assessment is out there to help you. It's an assessment that you can use at, uh, from many of the customers who've run it, they say it's very, very powerful, very, very illuminating, so they can see what they've had on their SAS 9 system. Start thinking about priorities, thinking about what's important, what things would help them really validate that the VI environment will work really, really well for them and may have higher performance or other sorts of aspects to leverage. And then use that information to come up with a migration plan. We have and my team, I've worked with lots of customers where we've talked through when customers have chosen to share their data with us. Some examples, if they have questions about will this particular thing migrate, you know, we can work with you on some of those things and say, yep, this is going to work. Or maybe you have a thing that would, would help us to find a bug. So, you know, we'll like to work with you as a team process. And we really want to make sure that you're ready for the process. When we finally get into the middle bullet, content migration, that's really where the bulk of what I've just talked about makes sense here. It's something administrators can do or end users. You know, that's something relatively new in VIA 4. An end user who has enterprise guide projects may want to move them over themselves. That's something that we facilitate and we have documentation on that or we have batch modes of doing that as well. Um, content migration is how we actually move to VIA. And then finally, the migration summary reports. Those are the important things that show us the overall status of how things went, the things that were successful, the things that might need some further attention for some reason, and helps you feel confident about the process you've just completed. So thank you very much for your attention and time. Um, Christiana and I are very happy to be able to talk with you about this, and we look forward to customers having successful journeys and modernizing onto the VIA platform. 
Thank you very much.